it's so great to have you on my channel today. How are you? I'm good. I'm excellent. I'm working from home and uh, very excited to uh, jump on jump on this call with you and just talk about running. I, we, we can't stop talking about it. So, right, yeah. right. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for accepting my invite. I've been a fan of your channel for a long time now. Um, so I follow you. I know you're very active on social media, on Instagram, and I'll link all those um, handles below so people can know where to find you. Tell us more about yourself. Introduce yourself yeah. to my channel. Absolutely. Um, so my name is Kyle McHugh. Um, I, I don't have you know a create too creative of a name for my YouTube channel or any of my handles. It's just Kyle McHugh running. So um, mind you. Yeah, yeah, that's just me. Um, I would say um, I'm here in the states. I'm on the East Coast, so we're in the same uh, time zone, which made this a little bit easier. But I really, haven't been running too. Um, I haven't been focused on running until post college years. Um, so it came to me. I would say. Well, I'm 28, so not very late. I'm still young for sure. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, so I mean, I was a college athlete. I played soccer and I always played sports that were um, contact and always you had to be like focused on the sport. And I found with running that once I started having a full time job and working, it was a sport that you really didn't have to think about while you were doing it. And you could really let your mind wander and that was something that really kind of drove me in that direction. So, um, yeah, I got a lot of goals. I got a lot of running goals um, and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, right. yeah, I think that gives a pretty good intro to me. Maybe. That's Is there anything you'd like to know? <laughs> so, actually, I wanted to talk more about your goals. and um, But first of all, let's start at the beginning. So, is there any event that specific event that triggered you to start running like what prompted your running journey yeah so i would actually say there it, this is an easy one because i really do have kind of a specific day um okay so in my grad program um i was working towards a master's degree and i got an internship out in kansas city um and i was like sure let's go do this um and i was doing video for a women's pro soccer team there and, you know, I, I was like, you know what, I've been around these athletes, like, maybe I should go for a run. I don't know. It just kind of came out of nowhere. And I went out and I started running and I ended up doing eight miles. Uh, like, it was like the first time I'd probably run more than two miles in a couple of years. And it was like, that was pretty wild. Like, I was like, I was just like, I kind of blew myself away. I, I enjoyed it, which was something I hadn't. That, that was news to me when it came to running. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say like the eight miler um, of Kansas City that from that point on, I was like, hey, maybe I should uh, like look into, I think, the, I think the mystery of the marathon in my head was like, there's people in this world that can run marathons, there's people who just hate that stuff. And then like this happened and I was like, maybe I should look into how people train for those things and all that. And yeah, needless to say, it's been it's been uphill, downhill, and across the road from there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And not many people can actually say that they, on their first run, they run eight miles. Well, I was not sore. But I, I guarantee you, I was, I was hurting afterwards because I hadn't ever really done anything like that. But um, yeah, it was inspiring and it was a good moment. Very good. Um, so I know that you also have a YouTube channel and I wanted you to, um, elaborate a little bit about that tell us how what prompted you to start a youtube channel yeah no problem um so i work for about three or four years now i work in sports videography um and i've always been um, a hobbyist when it came to photography and design um that the creative side of um i would just say the creative industry has always been where I've spent most of my time. But also within that, you are always operating within a brand or, right. you know, there's, there's definitely, there's rules to things. And I was like, you know what? I could start a YouTube channel about running because I found out that's not too bad. And from there, uh, I can do whatever I want. You know, I can break whatever rules I want when it comes to video. I can 
you know, upload a random video of me doing nothing. I can upload a video of me making a meal or I can just, you know, it's just, it really kind of broke down. I think a lot of things, if there was something I wanted to try in terms of editing, uh, motion graphics, something new I learned, I can just kind of give it a whirl on YouTube. Right. And I would also say in general, now that I'm a little bit more um, connected with people, I'm almost always getting like, positive constructive feedback which is awesome um people tend to be very just honest and um but also capable of giving you the high five before hitting you with the brutal honesty so <laughs> yeah I, I would just say youtube gave me an avenue that was very different but also you know it's still making videos which is pretty much what i do all the time very good and i can i think i told you this the first time we connected on youtube your videos are amazing like the editing the um they have a special light like there's and we can talk you can tell me your tips and tricks maybe later offline yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give away no problem stuff. no problem but, but the lighting is always so on point it's it's crazy i love your videos i mean they, they have a cinematography um that's different to anybody else's out there who does funny videos so i do appreciate awesome. that yeah, yeah, and I would actually add that in maybe. It's just I was a little inspired when I started looking at YouTube running videos is that there's there's so many amazing runners and everyone's doing their own thing. Um, but there was a hand, I think it, uh, Dan Whitehead, not that, not that we're having this conversation to promote other channels, but yeah, <laughs> <Never>. man. Um, <laughs> If, any, if anyone is um, a, bit, a big running fan and a YouTube fan, uh, that guy, Dan Whitehead, um, I think he's he's down in like Australia or something, um, but he was someone that I really got into and his videos are always, you know, um, deep, so well organized. You can tell he puts the time in and I think that was, he was one person that was like, I would like to try to do that, you know? I don't think I've subscribed to his channel, so I'm going to have to check him out. Definitely check him out. I don't think okay. he's been uploading as much lately, um, which is totally understandable with everything that's going wow. on in the world. But um, yeah, I, I would say some of his work is. So now let's get into more about your running. Um, what would you say is your favorite distance and why? Man, that is a good question. Um, for a long time, I think my favorite distance was um, marathon even though i've only i've done one on my own and i've done one um actual organized race um so those are like it is a i mean for me still i don't know if there's people i don't know if you run enough marathons that it eventually becomes like oh it's just another marathon but i mean I, for me both times i've run 26.2 miles it's like yeah holy smokes so that was a whole day of effort like that That's was right. like like <laughs> give me, you know, a hundred dollars worth of Chipotle and I'll see you in a week because I've worked it. <laughs> like I've earned it. Um, I agree. I so agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I guess like I would say the moments where I felt like I've earned it and felt so amazing have been at the marathon distance, but I would also say recently I've really enjoyed 5k, 10k. Okay. Um, uh, I'm sure I'm sure you were probably asking about running goals eventually, but uh, I would just say right now I've spent quite a bit of time uh, trying to feel fast. And that is, you know, that's, that's hard. I would say for anyone who, I mean, I've just never been the fast kid, you know, I mean, when I was on a soccer team, I had to be technical with my feet because I wasn't that fast. I wasn't, I've just never been the fast kid. Um, <laughs> so uh, fast yeah. Now. I've, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say right now, 10 K has been a lot of fun. And at the same time, you can go and do a 10 K and still have a beer afterwards, which is like way, I can't do that after a marathon. So, right. and you don't need as much preparation for a 10 K. Like you need to train, but it's not, yeah. you don't have to cart load and think about, I don't know. A marathon is like the mother load. It's like, it, it, to me, there's still a challenge. I've done two and um, I completely understand what you're saying. You, you, you mm -hmm. don't feel like yourself for a like good two or three days. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. On so many levels. Like I, yeah. I think I was just on a, it's kind of like, 
if you're a person that always feels like edgy and on the go, which I totally am. Anyway, yeah, anyone will tell you that like, I'm like someone who really stinks at just hanging out. Me too. But after you run a marathon, I'm content. Just it's weird. You're kind of just content with yourself because it is such a it's it's such a feat. Um, I agree. Yeah, it's too good of a feeling. We should go do a marathon, I guess. <laughs> well, now we have to do them on our own because everything yeah. <laughs> postponed or canceled. Um, so let's talk about goals. What are yep. your goals for running and for your YouTube channel? Um, so a, a number of goals for running. Uh, long term, for sure, I would love to crack a three-hour marathon, which is totally absurd right now, but I, I'm, I'm confident. Um, I mean, my fastest was a 450, um, and that was right here in North Carolina. Um, yeah, it was it was a shocker. It was my first marathon, and it had about 1,400 feet of gain, which I really didn't I didn't consider it um, to be that much of an obstacle. Like I looked it up and I I, uh, I mapped it all out, and I was like. Yeah, that won't be that bad, right? Over 26 miles, that's not that bad. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, I would <laughs> never do the same race again. I really wouldn't. Um, but um, so yeah, um, I want to break a three-hour marathon. Whether that happens next year, you know, in 2025, that's fine. Um, I think I think I definitely have you know the time and the momentum to get there. So. It, it'll it'll happen as long as I keep pushing for it. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I w I've spent quite a bit of time uh, building on 5K and 10K distance, and I would really like to do a sub 19 5K and also a sub 40 10K. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of all over the board. Just kind of, I would say your average runner always looking to chip a minute off always looking to chip a couple seconds off um and right now like you said we don't have too many organized races pretty much everything's virtual so it's just kind of and that's that's what happened with all this 5k and 10k stuff i was like you know what maybe i should just you know try try to be quick for a little bit and then in the fall we'll get back to right trudging uh for some so, longer miles so what about your youtube channel which YouTube you channel think? goals. Um, honestly, I, so okay. So one thing I would like to do, and like you're on a similar path. Like I love the idea of how of hosting interviews, hosting a space, um, and you know I would love to. I, I love setting up, you know, controlling light, controlling audio. I love being able to, you know, have my influence on those aspects. Um, so I would love to have like host in-person interviews that um, I can really take the time to produce. And I think that could be um, just a really cool avenue. Um, you know, maybe maybe a podcast that you also shoot the video of um, that could also go on YouTube. So I just, I, I love the avenue of um, the conversations, the interview aspect of eventually. Right uh that that can go towards your youtube channel and then it's not just about you you know it's about actually sharing um right, sharing and socializing yeah yeah we don't get to do much of that so <laughs> <laughs> not anymore <laughs> no everything um, is virtual yeah okay. um yeah another thing i think i've thought about a little bit is um down the road maybe trying to start like just like a running club that you know, other people could upload to the channel and it could just be like a community channel. Um, I thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you just all go for a run together, you know, once a week or something like that. Obviously that's not a right now thing, but uh, yeah, I like that idea. Um, yeah. What's your, um, I, I tend to ask this to our runners. I know there's all different kinds of shoes that we like or we like for a while and then we start hating. You only, f at least, I find that most people find their sweet shoes that they're happy with for a little bit and then they change their minds. So what's your favorite shoe? That is a very good question. Um, I honestly, it, I'm so conflicted on this too. That's why I think it's such a good question. 
like um and i haven't run in a ton of shoes so like there's a bunch of shoes i would love to run in um but like you know like many youtubers they aren't exactly being shipped to my house daily right. um so tons of shoes i'd like to try very conflicted i for about a hundred miles was absolutely in love with the Saucony Kinvaras, okay. um, both the tens and the elevens. I thought they were super comfortable, but it was really weird. I honestly felt like I had to put more of an effort in to run the a little, slightly quicker. And I really do think that being more of like a rocker, like low drop, they're like a four millimeter drop shoe, and that was something that I was like this feels weird. They're so comfortable. I feel like I can cruise for a really long time, but like, I'm not running my best. And at the same time, I know you're a fan. I, I know you've run in the launches. Um, I love I, yeah, they are. They're pretty great. Um, so I, I've done, what's that? They're so versatile. Like you, you yes. can be fast, but I could see myself running a full marathon in the launches. Like they're comfortable. Yeah. I think I have. I think my one was in Brooks Launch 5. I did a bunch of miles in the 5s. And then the 6s I had, I did about 100 miles in. And the 7s I'm running in now, I've done about 80 miles in. And I would say the 6s and the 7s line up like spot on. Um, yeah, I like the drop. They're, they're, they're oddly, like, and that's another thing that I was confused about. The Canvaras are really light. They're like 7.5 ounces. And then the launch was like nine and a half ounces. And you would think they would feel heavy, but like you feel quicker in them. So I, I, I would I feel like they give you that oomph. I don't know. It's like they, yeah. they push you up. I would definitely the agree first with that. Time, the first time you wear them, like the first time I wore them, I did a treadmill run. And I felt so like, I don't know, it's a little bit. It's a weird sensation you don't get with other shoes. Yeah, I do think, yeah, it, it almost sends you forward. Yes, that's right. Like you, you're falling forward, and as long as you catch yourself, you're going to go someplace. So <laughs> it's a pretty good shoe. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a uh. <laughs> so um, I'm always interested in knowing what kind of, because runners, we tend to be, Maybe not superstitious, but we are specific about how we do things before a race. Like, do you set up your clothes the day before? Do you have alternatives in case it rains or it's colder? What, what, what's your routine before a race? Like the night before and the morning of? So I would say when it comes to rain and weather changes is I'm a huge believer in wear less and if you're really that cold, you're going to run faster. <laughs> right. So that's, that's like my, my general, like if I'm planning on wearing a tank, I'm, I'm wearing a tank, whether it's like snowing or whatever it is. Um, and I'll, I know I'll just finish quicker and hopefully not pull any muscles. Get a good warm up in everybody out there. <laughs> right. Don't, don't, don't. And also don't follow my advice blindly. Um, <laughs> but um, I think superstitious is a good word for runners. I, I don't think there's, uh, any way around that because I'm I'm totally I, I mean I have to eat you know oatmeal with whatever fruit I have it has to have a whole banana in it. it has to I mean a little bit of brown sugar for sure maybe maple syrup um, I have to shower before a run even if it's like an 8 a.m. 5k I have uh -huh. to take a shower <laughs> I, need, I need that moment to just be like today is the day um, you got to drink probably at least two cups of coffee I'm, I'm like a four to five cup of coffee a day kind of guy. So uh, I got to get, you know, the morning coffee, just black hot coffee. Um, nothing too wild there. Um, get, I, I have to get there early, no matter what the race, even if it's like a 5K around the corner or, you know, an hour and a half away that you're staying in a hotel. I want to get there at least, you know, an hour and a half before. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll say an hour before I'm supposed to be there. I'm always like, I cut it so close. In all my videos, <laughs> I'm always running. Like, like I run to the start line <laughs> because I'm always late. <laughs> and I can't find my corral. There's always all sorts of things. I, that, yeah. The thing is, I tend to 
well, I sign up I sign up for races that are kind of that in that middle, like an hour and a half away, which is, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of a hike for a race. So if they start at 7.30, you have to leave your house at 5. So yeah. if you encounter any traffic issues, parking or anything like that, then you, you're late. If you have to line up for the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you got to incorporate the bathroom. That's, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Then you have to wake up at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah, basically. Cause, yeah, because you got to wake up, you got to have your coffee, then you got to go to the bathroom, then you got to have probably with some more coffee, shower. And yeah, so basically, I don't sleep the night before races is the gist. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think that's a given for most runners. Yeah. Um, was running what you expected it would be? Like when you started your running journey, did you think it was going to be, it was turn out, it was going to turn out to be like what it is right now for you? No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, I think, I think running for me was always um, something I did to improve at something else, whether it was soccer or a different sport or, even even people like I mean, if you just go out, if you're just someone who runs for general like health, like you don't really have goals or anything, you do it because it makes you feel a little bit better, you know. Right. Um, so I think running was always something that didn't have its own purpose for me until all of a sudden it was like I get honestly I didn't probably think of it too much as like its own sport. Like obviously it is its own sport. Um, but as soon as I think I made that connection and started having kind of goals and intentions with running, um, I kind of went from like, you know, running is just that, that side activity I do to get better at other things. And then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, like, you know, I'm, I'm making time for running because I want to, like, I, I, I really had those aspirations of all of a sudden being like, you know, how many, 0.5% of people in the United States have run a marathon. I want to be one of those 0.5% right. people, you know, I, it was like this, all of a sudden it had its own goals, its own intentions. And I also like immediately became obsessed with the, like, man, that's got to hurt. Like, we got to try that. Like that's, that's, a, that's, a, <laughs> that is, that is a suffering. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, that probably didn't really answer your question, but I wasn't, I had no clue where running was going to take me. Um, I definitely did not think I'd be putting this much time into, you know, a YouTube channel and trying to figure out, you know, the best ways to make a YouTube video about running engaging because most people, like, if you're making YouTube videos about, um, you know, tips and tricks inside of video editing, you, you can kind of sit there and you can set it up and the whole video you can kind of produce and control. But like, I can't control if I'm going to make a video about a half marathon that ends up being, you know, on a beach in the rain or something like you can't, right. it's so out of your hands. Um, so yeah, I did not think I would be going through. Um, yeah, kind of the continuous process of trying to come out with content and to do new things with it. Um, that being said, I, it's, it, I consider it um, the job that I really enjoy, basically. <laughs> so I just wanted you to tell us where, you know, for people who are watching this right now, where can they find you? Where yeah. are your social handles? I'll put them below, but just uh, tell us where you are and which social media they can find yeah. you. Yeah, no problem. Um, well, my YouTube channel is just kyle McHugh. there was no running aspect to it when i originally started a youtube channel so um you can just find me kyle McHugh. just search kyle McHugh running um it should be one of the first things that pop up um let's see i wrote these out because i knew you were gonna ask me uh twitter i'm just McHugh running um okay. so that's pretty easy and then uh instagram kyle McHugh running so basically if you just search kyle McHugh running anywhere i should pop up um I will also throw in that um, I, I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to get canceled or whatever it is, but currently signed up for New York City Marathon. Um, and I'm in the process of fundraising for Parkinson's research. Just throwing that out there for uh, whoever watches this. If you have a connection to Parkinson's, um, feel free to check out my channel. You can watch any of the videos. The links are always in the description. Um, and I'll put yeah, it, 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 would mean it, it would mean a lot. 
I'll put them below. And if it happens, I am, I signed up to be a volunteer. So I'll be at the finish line. Yeah. Yeah. They, they actually put me, I am a marshal, like a traffic marshal, I think they call them, but I'm right at the finish line. So. Wow. You're um, going to be important. Oh, sure. That sounds, that sounds big time. <laughs> I don't know why they, but <laughs> I just signed up for a time slot and that's, you know, what they're going to have me do it if, if it happens, which I hope, right. I hope it does happen. So thank you so much, Kyle. I really enjoyed having you on my channel. Yeah, absolutely. It, I, I feel like we could probably do this for like another half hour. So it's a good thing yeah. we're ending it here and we, we can just connect another time. We will, I'm sure. Thank you so much, Kyle. Absolutely. Thank you so much. See you around. Yeah. Bye. Bye.